Well, hello everyone. I am going to wait a few minutes till I get a few people to log in. It is hot in my car. So I always get these revelations at the post office. I do not know why, but God speaks to me, maybe from waiting in the line or something. So I'll wait for you guys to log on. If not, I will, um, well, not if not, but I'll also uh, post this um, as a post. This this is a really good thought that you really need to hear. So let me know you're out there. Hey, Karen, let me know. I see I have 12 people logging on. Um, okay, cool, cool. Let me know. Give me some hearts. Give me some hands. I'm going to crack my window, so forgive the ding, ding, okay? Um, there we go, because it's hot. Y'all know when we over 40, we need air circulating. Glory to God. Bless the Lord. Y'all know I'm going to be 50 next year, right? So I want to talk to you about something. Hey, Brother uh, Billups and uh, Sister Winnie. So I want to talk to y'all about something. <laughs> you are silly. You know who I'm talking to, too. Hey, Sister Angela. Hey, Sister Sheffield. Okay, so know your lane. Know your lane. Okay, so I had the opportunity to speak to one of my dear, dear sister girlfriends last night. And we were up on the phone. She lives in L.A. So we were on the phone. Hey, Sister Gina, we were on the phone until like 2 or 3 o'clock. I was supposed to be with Tavis Smiley, uh, not Tavis Smiley, uh, uh, Smiley radio program this morning. And... Uh, had told a brother I was meeting them there and was up with her talking on the phone. So anyway, we were talking about knowing your lane. Hello, Sister Carolyn from Atlanta. Girl, you already know. What did I used to say that you would crack up about? Um, what? I forgot. Remind me, Carolyn. I used to say something and it just used to crack you up that I would say when I would minister. So, so I was talking to my friend girl Donna last night. And we were talking about how people tell people to stay in their lanes. You know, you're doing too much. Stay in your lane. And I talked about this, you know, a few months. Shoot. Yes. Yes. That's it. That's it. I got to shoot for you today, girl. Watch this. So uh, we were talking about how people tell people you need to stay in your lane. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? Who are you to tell someone, you know, what their lane is? And I had done a post several months ago about being the jack of all trades. And I never finished that sentence because we tell the saying as we come, came up, anyone in my age group, jack of all trades, somebody finished the sentence. What, what did we used to say? Master of none. Exactly. But I've learned that the scripture also reminds us that God has gifted people. Remember the talents? He gave one, 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 three, one, five. And the one who had one, he said, you're wicked. You did nothing with this gift that I gave you. So now I'm going to give your gift to the one I gave five to. So there are many people, my pastor being one, A. Thomas Hill, Gina, you have multiple gifts, uh, uh, Sister Karen, uh, Sister Angela Smith, oh my God, y'all think she's an intercessor, but a businesswoman, an author, she is multi-talented, and so many of you, hey, my good friend Gwen Holiday. let me tell y'all, we've been friends for over 30 years, 35 years actually. Thank you for loving me and putting up with me for so long. So actually, Gwen, I was talking to Donna last night. So we were talking about this thing about staying in our lane. And the Holy Spirit said something to me. I hope this shouts somebody. Look outside your window, wherever you're at right now. How many lanes are on the street that is outside your window or if you're not near a window how many lanes are on the street that you pull into your job or when you leave your house how many lanes somebody tell me hey sister brooks somebody tell me how many lanes y'all got near your house on your where your job sits how many lanes are on that street somebody talk to me come on all right sister you saying i'm teaching now i need you to come on hallelujah okay four that's good sister karen that's good so Either there's two lanes going, all right, Sister Smith, four, three, there we go. So there's two lanes maybe going one way and two lanes going the other way. And the Holy Spirit said, I need you to look up lanes. Look up, look up. So as I started while we were on the phone, I started, this started ministering to me. Because 
there are streets there there are let's back up there are there are roads there are service lanes service the ones that you pull off the highway and their service lanes and we have these now going down 31 and you you get off the highway and then you go on to a service road so you have so service roads you have roads you have streets and you have highways i need somebody to get this the holy spirit says some of you are living your life while you still on a road or a street when I have given you highway access. You have multiple lanes on your road. You are gifted to write. You may be gifted to sing. You may be gifted to, to uh, write songs, not just write books. You may be gifted to teach. You teach, gifted to preach, to host a television show. Come on, Karen. You are gifted. You're gifted with young people. You're gifted with women. You're gifted. And God said you have multiple lanes at your exposure, but you keep allowing people to tell you to stay in your lane, but you got four lanes on your road. Listen, my friend girl lives in California. There are eight lane highways there, y'all. Eight lane highways. Sister Carolyn, how many? Atlanta, multiple lane highways, six lanes, eight lanes. There are parts of LA where as you are merging off, there are four lanes that's just merging off the highway to go onto another highway. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. My lane is a highway. Now I'm about to help somebody. Highways also have express lanes. Highways also have expressways. What's an expressway? Expressways are taken care of. They are really, really pretty. You're not going to find a pothole on an expressway. The other thing about an expressway is it allows you to get to your destination quicker. There are less exits, which means if you apply this to your life and understanding, on an expressway, highways can have many exits, many exits, which means there are people coming in and there are people getting off. Listen, expressways have minimal access, minimal ways to get on it, and minimal ways to get off it. In your life, you have an expressway purpose. I'm talking to somebody because I'm talking to them, helping myself. Tuesday, God said, "You, I've given you an expressway. That's why everybody can't be on your road. Don't make you special. Because what we got to understand about an expressway, you got to pay to be on that boy. Come on. You got you to gotta pay. You got to pay to be on an expressway. It's called a toll road. You got to pay the cost to be on that boy. Now, let me help you. When I'm going to Chicago, I don't really like exp I don't really like the toll roads. I don't. I don't like, by the time I get to Chicago, I didn't pay $6.75. Come on, Karen. I got to pay $6.75 to get from any of <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help me when I could just stay on 94. I could just stay 65, 94, be done. But my niece lives uh, uh, off of um, Hyatt Park. So uh, I go 80, sometimes 80, 90. But uh, I could just stay on 94. But you know what I'm going to get on 94? Come on, people. You're going to get traffic jams. It's a whole bunch of cars. You might see some potholes. The scenery ain't that cute. You got all them factories and them foul smells. Come on, y'all. Our highways, even though you have multiple, pur mul your purpose is multifaceted. Come on, come on. <laughs> yes, yes. So even though your purpose is multifaceted, beloved, even with your highway, you're going to encounter a lot of stuff. You're going to encounter a lot of stuff. Ask God to give you an expressway purpose. Good God Almighty. Give me, I'm, you're going to pay the cost. You're going to pay the cost. Now, our federal taxes are supposed to keep up our highways. They always fix it some in Indianapolis. 465, 65. The one I don't really see them working on too much is 74. 69, 31. They always fixing some. And our taxes are paying for that. So you're paying for it. But there's an extra cost to be on an expressway. You got to pay extra. But on an expressway, you get there quicker. You have less traffic. The people who are on help, everybody got a purpose. But a person on an expressway, they ain't, time, they ain't got no time for no foolishness. 
They ain't got time for foolishness. They trying to get to where they're going and they want to get there quicker. So I had to ask the Lord, why, if you've given me this highway with multifaceted gifts and talents and abilities, and I hope this helps somebody, and now you're telling me, you're putting me on a fast track. You're putting me on an expressway because, daughter, you've paid the cost. You gave up a six-figure salary and you left it off for me. This is going to help somebody. You left that relationship and you left that relationship. You let that go and you let that go. You set your life apart. You set your life aside for purpose and to seek my will. You ain't perfect, Tuesday. You ain't perfect. You still got issues, right? Show what? Good God. You still got issues. You still coming to me. But the beauty of God, beloved, if you keep coming to God, one day you're going to wake up and those struggles are going to be gone. He counts the times that you have been faithful and you haven't fallen, fallen into the foolish traps, to the sins that so easily have beset you for years. He counts the days of your faithfulness. He counts and hears your cries of, Lord, help me. I don't want to do this no more. Give me strength. So we have all fallen short. But you got to hear what I'm saying. God honors your days of holiness. God honors the minutes, the hours. The weeks, the months that you have sought him to do right. You've asked him for the strength and the help to do right. He honors that. I'll never forget when I heard Pastor Johnson say that. Pastor Jeffrey Johnson. When Pastor Johnson said that, I have I've held on to that. He counts my days. He honors my days of faithfulness. That should encourage someone. And so, many of you are moving from the bypass, the access roads to your to your street. Many of you are moving from your street to your highway. And God is about to expedite. Hey, brother Joshua. Hey, sister Sandra. God is about, hey, sister Erica. God is about to expedite some of you in your purpose. He is going to put you on an expressway. You have paid the cost. Now, let me tell you, you might get a little lonely sometimes because everybody ain't getting on and everybody ain't getting off and that's on purpose. That's on purpose. He has to limit your access. He has to limit who all is in your ear and who all is trying to get in your lane because, listen, everybody that with you ain't for you. Y'all better tweet that one right there. Everybody that's with you ain't for you. Mm -hmm. So you have to get in a place with God to allow him to allow him to expedite you, to take you from the highway. Because see, leaving Indy, you got to get on 465 to 65 to 94 before you ever get to 80 and 90. You got to hit a lot of, then I got to leave my community, which is one lane. And they drive through there like they own, you know, the 500. Good God almighty. And then I get on a, a, a street that has two lanes before I ever get to 465, before I ever get to 64, before I ever get to 94, before I ever get to the toll road. So you avoided some potholes. You, you avoided some potholes. You, you avoided some accidents. Less accidents happen on an expressway than they do on a highway. Expressways tend to be, uh, there's not a lot of scenery, but it's real clean. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You, you, don't, you don't get to see a lot of stuff because your focus is moving forward to get to where you want to go. It ain't a bunch of scenery on an expressway, on a toll road. It's not a lot. You, you, it's just about purpose from here to there. Come on. So, so accidents are less accidents unless I remember a couple of years ago I had ministered in Chicago at your conference Karen and there was a major snowstorm and y'all was trying to get me out of there so I could get back to Indy well I didn't get back to Indy in time before the snowstorm happened so I had to stop in Maryville where my sister-in-law was and so I hung out with her but what I discovered I had texted my pastor and other people asking him to pray because I got on that toll road 
because my tires were bad. Oh my God, thank you, Holy Spirit. My tires were bad on my car. I knew I couldn't get on 94 to get back to Indianapolis because my tires would not have brought me back. What I was driving on, what I was in, my vehicle, my mode of transportation would not have gotten me back safely. So the Holy Spirit led me to get on that expressway, to get on 80 so I could at least get to Maryville. And I wasn't doing a lot of slipping and sliding because they had already came through on the place that we got to pay extra to be on. They had already came through and sawed it and plowed it. So I was able to get to Maryville and get up in the morning and head home on good lanes, on good lanes. But what I found out was that there had been several trucks that had jackknifed on that road up ahead because they still weren't being careful. They, they were being mindful, but they weren't being careful. So God still needs for you to be careful in your journey. He still, no matter what street he puts you on, no matter what road he puts you on, no matter what access he gives you, no matter what the limitations are that he puts in your life or who he gives you access to, you still must be careful on your road, on your journey, on your sojourner. I remember that. I remember that. I remember trying to get home and praying all the way. Listen. No longer allow people. You got some gifts. If you got some gifts, clap me up. Give me some hearts. Come on. You got some gifts. You got some talents. Vicki, you're more than an administrator. You're an author now. You're a speaker. You have more than one lane. You're a mother. Come on. You're a wife. Good God. You need anointings for that. Come on. Shoot. Yes. You need anointings for those things. So you are multi-talented. You are multi-gifted. You're a strategist. You're a visionary. Hey, Sister Tanya King. Tanya King is another one I've been friends with since the 10th grade. Glory to God. God, hey, Sister Viola. Hey, Sister Bass. God has given you multi-talents and multi-gifts. Don't sit on any of them. You use your highway. You stretch out. Let me tell you something. That's why I like a king-size bed because I can just stretch out. <laughs> Hallelujah. When my nieces were little, they would all climb in the bed. They, I mean, it'll be all four of them up in there with me. Hallelujah. Now I got some great nieces and, and my bed is smaller, but they try to get on up in there with me too. But I love it because I can just stretch out. I can stretch out vertically. I can stretch out horizontally. You stretch out across your highway. Come on. You switch lanes. Just, you, and you know what? It's your highway. You ain't even got to turn on the turn signal if you don't want to. Hallelujah. You got to be mindful, careful, and pray, prayerful. I'm with you, Sister Carolyn. Good God. God has given you a highway. You need to go back to school, go back to school. You need to write the book, write the book. You need to start the television show. Start the television show. This, this show that God is allowing me to tape on November the 12th has been a 20-year vision. I've been talking about this forever. And God said, now is the time. Now? While I'm doing my first ministry, my first women's conference? Now? You want me to do all of this on the same weekend? Yes. And when you do it, I'm going to give you people to give you your raffle items and fur coats and $50 dinners and $200 rings. And I'm going to get you your lunch paid for it. God is doing this thing because I'm not afraid of my lanes anymore. And I'm not letting people limit my lanes. I'm not allowing people to tell me anymore, you're doing too much. You know, people will say, um, God, you got a lot going on. How many can wave their hand to that? I do. I do. Man, you busy. I shut people down when they tell me I'm busy. I'm not busy on purpose. Because I ain't you, you're not going to find me doing nothing that ain't in my purpose. And prayerfully, not doing too much that God ain't told me to do. And if I miss it, I'll get back in line. Oh, he's a gracious daddy. He's a loving father. So, whatever God has called you to do for this season of your life, stretch out and do it. You need to, you need to write that song. You need to make that album. Gina. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What what you supposed to be doing right now, Karen? Karen, Karen Morton, evangelist. You know, I I I love I know that my first purpose is the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm clear about that. I love the word. But until God opens that door and sends me across the world to teach and preach the gospel and and I declare that I will have a ministry that reaches the nations, 
a, a teaching ministry. It's been prophesied like uh, my, my other mentor, Joyce Meyer. She don't know she's my mentor, but hallelujah. But I, I receive it now. No, don't be afraid of your greatness. I need to tell somebody that. Don't be, see your lanes identify your greatness. If they identify, y'all praying, you know, the prayer of, of uh, Habakkuk enlarge my territory you what get your lanes right know your lanes and don't be afraid of them he trying to enlarge your territory but you you afraid why well, can't do this i recognize that everything isn't for now every vision isn't for now every download isn't for now i got another one for you everything that god gives you isn't for you to do it's for you to pass it on to somebody else i have a vision for something I have a vision. I'm going to tell you what it is. All I ask is that I just get, what, maybe a 10% a commission on the idea? An all-white laundry. An all-white dry cleaners. Doctors, nurses, business people, they bring the, all their whites to you. Why? Because I can't stand when my white shirts don't look white no more. The reason they don't turn white is because of the liquid they're putting them in because they're mixing it with other colored stuff that's a that's an idea right there and all white cleaners so hey when you do it give me credit because it's out here <laughs> hallelujah that i gave it to you so give me credit give me like a little you know 10 percent something hallelujah when it jump off but everything god gives you for you to do for gives you is not for you to do so share some of the knowledge share it so yes business minister businesswoman media i declare media mogul i declare trainer relationship coach executive coach coach relationships ex executive spiritual what what all has he called you to do and i'm challenging you today to walk in it define your lane if it's two lanes that's cool if it's one work that thing like i said drive it till the wheels fall off <laughs> hallelujah you work that thing and you be excellent at it. If it's two things, if it's three things, if it's four things, work it. Work it. Yes, it, it, it was hard driving in that storm. When I was caught in that snowstorm, it was hard driving because what I was rolling in, what I was riding in, wasn't, it, wasn't go, it, 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 it couldn't get me to where I wanted to go. Not in that weather, not in that storm. So what you have to understand is what God has for you. Sometimes you're going to have to switch your mode of transportation. Yeah, I said it. Sometimes you're going to have to switch some things up. Who's rolling with you? What you rolling on? Who's connected to you? You, you got to bring some fresh meat in. <laughs> Glory to God. You need to bring some new people in. You need some cheerleaders, right? You need some Elizabeths. You need some Jonathans. You need some people to tell you, you raggedy, but I love you. Hallelujah. You need to get that right. Yeah, but when you get it right, watch what God's going to do. But I'm going to walk with you while you get it right. You're out of order. Your attitude is stank. You need to breathe. You need to pray. You need to shut up. <laughs> Hallelujah. You need to wait on the Lord. You need to get the peace of God. Change your mode. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So, what's your lane? What's your lane? My pastor is A. Thomas Hill. Writer, singer, preacher, teacher, pastor, father, husband, grandfather, mentor. I love my pastor. He's awesome. Play, playwright, producer. Come on. Come on. Get it, get it. Come on. Let's listen. And let's stop saying that to people. Now, let me say this. I always use this analogy. You a greeter at church and you barely smile. You probably shouldn't. That's probably not your lane, right? But you real good at planning stuff. Maybe you need to be on the planning committee for the women's ministry or the men's ministry, right? Maybe you need to be a part of the parking lot ministry. I don't know. But 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 when you know you in the wrong lane, you know you in the wrong lane. <laughs> you know, you know you should not be a part of the hospitality committee okay you you gotta cook you don't cook you don't okay you y'all feel me you hear what i'm saying you know you think there's some glamour in being called to preach and, and you don't even read the words you don't study but you got a title called minister go put that thing down and go learn some scriptures it, it ain't even about the degree because 
I was in the word and loving the word before I ever went and got a degree and preaching the word and teaching the word. And God called me into the place of the prophetic and a prophetic teacher and a prophet long before I ever had a degree. Come on. You know you out of, you know you out of the lane. You know it. You know. Listen, you ain't got four lanes. You're not on the highway. You're not on the expressway. Be cool with, with you know, Emerson. You see what I'm saying? Be cool with the street you live on. First of all, let's just start our ministry right there, right at home. That's what the words say. Perfect that thing. Let, let somebody at home know you love him before you start branching out across highways and stretching out. <laughs> I know. Y'all got to pray for me. I'm back. I'm back, baby, because God has helped me. This, this is how Carolyn and this is how Karen. This is how I used to flow, right? So I love the Lord. I love the Lord. I hope to see you on November 11th, 12th. I'm not preaching. I'm not teaching. I'm not even sure if God is going to bring me into the ministry of uh, private prophecy with the Presbyterian. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I, he hasn't said for me to go in yet. Uh, so I'm going to my own conference to receive. I'm going to my own to get revived, my revival. God is doing a new thing. He really is. This is about women getting revived, women getting stirred up, the fire of the Lord being set ablaze in you for purpose and destiny for your life, for your ministry, for your purpose, for your business, for your family, for your marriage, for your husband that's to come, for your kids that's out of order. Get the fire back. Hallelujah. Get rid of the, the, the bitterness and the anger. Get the fire back. God want to set the men on fire. That's why Friday is open to men. So pastors, male, female, those who say and believe, they are called to the prophetic, prophetic ministers, prophetic intercessors, prophetic worshipers, prophetic teachers, prophetic preachers. You just don't have to be a prophet, but there's a prophetic anointing on your life. You need to be there on Friday, male or female. You need to register for the whole weekend. Karen, I hope you can come. Grab some more women and come on. Hallelujah. Listen know your lane and drive it get in it get on your highway your expressway you paid the cost and if you haven't you about start gonna start it because i've declared it you're gonna start paying it now to ride on it freely all access just put you see on 94 you can't put a cruise control on anybody ever drove on 94 going east going west you can't put on no cruise control on 94 but on your your express lane where you didn't pay the cost you can put on you can put on a cruise you can put a cruise control on and you can roll on out. So I love you. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the claps. Thank you for the thumbs up. This is a word for somebody and I need you to share it with people. Know your lane. Get in it and ride it until the wheels come off. God bless you.